Hi Year 6, Mr Cole here for this week's SPAG lesson and this week we're learning about parenthesis. Parenthesis, adding extra information to a sentence or paragraph using brackets, dashes or commas. If you take it out again, the passage should still make grammatical sense. The case was warm and very full and its straps struggled to keep in its contents. Most of the time, parenthesis is tucked into a sentence, but a parenthesis can also be its own sentence as part of a paragraph. She opened the envelope, carefully sliding the paper out. She hadn't received a handwritten letter in years. You don't need to read the parenthesis for this to make sense, but it does give you more detail. Parenthesis can help us better understand things like setting or aspects of a character, like their emotions, motivations or background. It can almost feel like the writer is whispering a secret in your ear. Les Lockhead's poem, The Bargain, uses parenthesis to describe a character at the Barra's Market in Glasgow. Nothing to sell but three bent forks, a torn calendar, last year's, and a broken plastic sandal. The person has nothing of value to offer and the parenthesis reinforces this idea. It's bad enough that the calendar is torn, but the parenthesis makes it clear just how pitiful and worthless it is by telling us it's out of date too. If your writing makes sense, but you want to add more info, try sticking in a parenthesis. You can really build on your ideas. Okay, so there's several ways we can show parenthesis. We can use a pair of commas. We can use a pair of dashes or a dash on the end of a sentence or we can use a pair of brackets. So here's an example of a sentence about rainforests that uses parenthesis. Rainforests, which are found near the equator, contain numerous living, thing, living creatures. So just look at that sentence for a moment. It's got a main clause. Rainforests contain numerous living creatures. And that main clause makes sense on its own. But we've added parenthesis using commas. And the parenthesis in this instance is coming after the noun, which are found near the equator. And we've used commas for that. On this occasion, the parenthesis is actually a relative clause because we've used a relative pronoun and providing extra information about this noun here. Let's have a look at another example. Here we go. The Amazon rainforest, the largest in the world, is situated in South America. So this time we've got our main clause, the Amazon rainforest is situated in South America. And our parenthesis is in brackets, the largest in the world. So it's a bit of extra information. It's not essential, but it is useful for us to know. In this one, it says the majority of life in the rainforest, 90% in fact, is found in the canopy. So we've used dashes on this occasion. Now, the dashes, again, give the extra piece of information and the rest of the sentence makes sense on its own. So the majority of life in the rainforest is found in the canopy. That tells us that works fine on its own, but we're really emphasizing how much of that life is found in the canopy by using parenthesis and the dashes on that occasion. So here's three examples of the same sentence and they're all using different forms of parenthesis. We've got the scientist, an expert in plant life, examined the rare specimen. So on the first occasion, we've used commas. Second sentence is exactly the same, but we've used dashes. And the third one, we've gone for brackets. So how do I know which one to choose? Well, we tend to use commas if we want to avoid interrupting the flow of how your sentence is read. Or we don't, when you first look at it, we don't really want it to stand out on the page. We would use dashes if we really want to draw the reader's attention to very important information. Occasionally, it can be informal to use it, but not always. You can use it in more formal writing if you really want it to stand out and be important. And we can use brackets for additional but not essential information. You see lots of brackets in, in non-fiction texts. I like to think of it a bit like this. The way I read it is affected by the punctuation that is there. So if I just go back, the scientist, an expert in plant life, examines the rare specimen. So I tried not to interrupt my flow as I was reading. Now this time, I'm looking at my one with the dashes. 
the scientist, an expert in plant life, examines the rare specimen. So because I've seen the dashes, I thought I'm really going to emphasize that part. That seems really important to me that he is so important. It's such an expert in the plant life. And then the last one, we've got the brackets. Well, for this, I might go the scientist. An expert in plant life examines the rare specimen. So I kind of think of the brackets as like little whispers at the end. We don't definitely need to know it, but it's, it is information that, that helps us to understand. So what I want you to do, can you have a go at adding parenthesis to this sentence? The scientist travelled to Madagascar. So what I suggest you do is you could put the parenthesis here after the word scientist. That's our noun. You could use brackets, commas, dashes. Give me a bit more information about this scientist. Now, alternatively, you could uh, put it at the end of the sentence. If you put brackets at the end of the sentence, you need uh, the pair of brackets there and it would go before the full stop and the bracket would go at the very end after the full stop. If you put a dash at the end, though, you just need one single dash and then the full stop at the end of the extra information. So do think carefully about how you do that. But the easiest place to put it in is just there. Give it a go. So try it now. This is what I went for. The scientist, a botanist, traveled to South America. See, I've used a pair of brackets here. Uh, it's a little bit of extra information. It's not essential to know that he's or she is a botanist, but it does help us to understand their purpose for their visit. So that could help you a little bit when you're thinking about what what type of parenthesis to use. OK, so what I want you to have a go at doing on the Google Drive, I've left this sheet and there are three sentences for you to try and add parenthesis to. See if you can use different forms of parenthesis. Think carefully about where you're going to put it after the noun, usually the best place. But after you've done those three sentences, can you then have a go at writing some of your own sentences that use parenthesis? Use as much parenthesis as you possibly can. Go ridiculous. Can you add parenthesis in every single sentence? You would never normally do that in a piece of writing, but to help you practice, just use it as much as you can and practice using brackets, dashes and commas to do so. Now, what I'm going to do now, whilst you're thinking about that, I'm going to play you a little song from Grammasaurus, which is a bit of a rip off of a Britney Spears classic. Listen away and I'll be back to you at the end. Now I need to find a way that I can go. 
you add a little detail. Detail? But doesn't that mean another sentence? No. No, it doesn't. Just use parentheses to drop detail in the middle. Aw, oh, you're so wonderful, Zach. Brackets. I'm sure that'll be stuck in your head all day now, having heard that. Oh, <laughs> I nearly had it again then. Okay, so um, don't forget, the worksheet is on the Google Drive for you. The three sentences to add the parenthesis to, and then write some sentences of your own that use as much parenthesis as possible. Thanks for listening, guys. I'd love to see some of your work sent into the Google Drive. Good luck, and see you next time.